Welcome everyone, glad you are here. It is Wednesday morning. This is our busy morning of faith, formation and service uh, here at St. Peter. Busy day, I shouldn't say busy morning. Um, we have uh, morning prayer at nine, which you're a part of right now. We have uh, Bible study at uh, 10 a.m., noonday prayers at noon. Uh, we have meetings in the early afternoon and then our cooking crew shows up for the community supper and we serve supper starting at five o'clock here on the grounds of St. Peter's. And of course, then we also welcome you to evening prayer, sort of closing out all of the things. And I believe, yes, we also have a community of hope meeting. Uh, no, that was last week. That was last week. That was last week we had one. So yes, and we don't have a community of hope board meeting. So, but in all things, we're glad to be serving in the name of Christ. We're glad you're here. Please be aware that if you are watching on YouTube and you can like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, your thumbs up and your notifications will support our algorithms as we seek to carry the light of Christ out into the YouTube verse um, as well. You're also welcome to offer your intercessions and Thanksgiving in the comments sections. Please do tender those up. We'll make sure those get prayed over if you're posting on YouTube um, at the next service, which will be evening prayer. And if uh, you are on the Facebook Live, please okay. do offer those up before the end of the service. When we pray the prayer of St. Francis, um, right after that, we offer the intercessions. Today, we are remembering Wolfstan, Archbishop of York, uh, Saxon, who was uh, relatively high born and an ecclesiastical by birth. He uh, died in the early 1000s and uh, was an, quite an interesting figure. He was elected simultaneously to the sees of Worcester and York um, and was renowned for his eloquence, his preaching, and his clean hand in writing. Uh, those who speak Middle English, which I do not, remark upon not only the poeticism, but also the pure visual structure of his writings and of his preaching, making use of alliteration and, uh, and the early form of what would be meter, which is called beats. Um, in his writing, as well as his imagery. He is famous particularly for a sermon uh, after his appellation that it was entitled the, the Wolf's Sermon to the English. He liked being uh, part of a group of family members all named Wolfstan who uh, drew their name from the wolf Lupa in, lupus in, uh, in, um, in Latin. And uh, he, uh, he talks about that to probably to ad nauseum um, to throw in a little more Latin. But one of the things that they do speak about was his incredible talent for preaching and also his politically savvy nature. He was, uh, if you will, a born bishop and was a truly influential figure in the early days of the English church. Um, and he pretty much saw the church through the end of the Saxon, uh, the Saxon overlordship and into the Norman reign. So today we remember Wolfstan, Archbishop of York, preacher, prelate, and poet. All right, here we go into morning prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. 
Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 38 this morning, I'll offer the odd. Please respond with the even. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. They weigh like a burden too heavy for me. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All day long I go around mourning. For my loins are filled with burning and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am utterly spent and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is known to you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my affliction and my neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek to hurt me speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf, I do not hear, like the mute who cannot speak. Truly, I am like one who does not hear and in whose mouth is no retort. But it is for you, O Lord, that I wait. It, it, is, for you, it is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. For I pray, only do not let them rejoice over me. Those who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Those who are my foes without cause are mighty and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good are my adversaries because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was peopled. Noah, a man of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan! Lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed by the Lord my God be Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. May God make space for Japheth, and let him live in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the third song of Isaiah. Together, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. 
but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, let us go on toward perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith toward God, instruction about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. For it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away since on their own they are crucifying again the son of God and are holding him up to contempt. Ground that drinks up the rain falling on it repeatedly and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and on the verge of being cursed, its end to be burned over. Even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust, he will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Te Deum together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us those tres- forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You are saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose only begotten Son led captivity captive and gave gifts to your people. Multiply among us faithful pastors who, like your holy Bishop Wolfstein, will give courage to those who are oppressed and held in bondage. And bring us all, we pray, into the true freedom of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Pray for Anne Marie. Give thanks for a successful doctor's appointment yesterday. Pray for Anne and for Anne. Got a lot of Anne's to pray for today. Pray for Nancy and her family as they prepare to lay her father to rest this weekend. Pray for all those in need. They're carrying prayer concerns in their hearts. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the ministry and those lives of Christ being lived in the Diocese of Juba, the province of the Church of South Sudan. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend Dr. Joyce M. Shire, the very Reverend Greg Bazilla, and the Reverend Deacons Kenneth Carpinelli, Joe Luzardo, Michelle, Michelle Shea Martis Nerbas, and Bridget Pincelli. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, that, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory 
throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I have no idea how many people joined us on Facebook today because they changed their algorithm again or their yeah. setup again, so I can't see who's on. But if you would be so kind as to just let us know you're here, we appreciate that. I saw a couple of people throw a thumbs up as we were praying. So uh, just throw your name on, let us know, and we can keep you in our intercessions as well. Know that we're happy to have you with us. We are getting ready for Bible study, and we look forward to welcoming you throughout the day in prayer and service. Please do like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, your thumbs up mean the world to us, and we're happy to welcome you home to St. Peter's. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.